for the MMOA podcast. Hi there. Thanks for being here. Hi, Noosh. Nice to see you. Hi, guys. Okay, so let's talk about our topic for today on the MMOA podcast, which is strength training exercises consolidated into a set of super seven exercises that we can give to everybody. So I know a lot of some of the instructors and TAs, lead faculty for ICE work in really gram worthy settings. We've got stave off, we've got, you know, onward physical therapy, we've got stronger life. We have all of these different avenues for patients to get stronger with excellent coaching, excellent feedback, excellent programming. And now not all of us work in settings where that's the norm. Some of us work in regular outpatient ortho clinics or SNFs or home health. Uh, or some of us are in acute care. We've got lots of different settings that our clinicians work in. And we might not have time, access, creativity, mental bandwidth to come up with individualized programming all day, every day. Yet we want to adhere to the guidelines for strength training and endurance training so that our patients can get better. We're in this awkward struggle of wanting to be better clinicians, but being restricted on the resources that we have available to us. Not only that, but we want to set our patients up for long-term success. We don't want our patients outside of our care to give up. We want our patients to be consistent. And now in a perfect world, we could tell everybody here is a group exercise program, a CrossFit gym, a personal trainer who will take you by the hand and guide you through the land of fitness until you're independent. But not everybody has resources, time, confidence, and knowledge to make all those things a reality. So what are we going to do? So I have two dilemmas. Number one, nobody can ever say my last name. It's spelled C-S-E-P-E. -E. So I don't know if anybody else struggles with this plight, but nobody can remember my name. Second plight is that nobody exercises enough. So I combined my two problems and came up with a solution that I call the Seppi Super 7. So my last name is Seppi, C-S-E-P-E. -E. And I came up with seven exercises that I can confidently give to any patient and feel good about it. Is my purpose here today to tell you to do the Seppi Super 7, TM? <laughs> no. My goal here is to make sure that you feel confident in coming up with functional movements that everybody can do so that you can have your own super seven or super whatever, super eight, fantastic five, flipping four. I'm coming up with these on the fly. <laughs> but the Seppi Super Seven is a combination exercise program that can be given to anybody and scaled to make sure that it's appropriate. So this is a part one podcast. I'm gonna keep it brief because my attention span is short and I wanna get to the beach. <laughs> but <laughs> the next part of this podcast is gonna be talking about the dosage of these exercises. So in my routine, the Seppi Super 7, I wanted to make sure that it was scalable for different levels and abilities that it was easy to do without much equipment, that there were different options for different people of different abilities, and that the exercises are simple enough from a base going upwards that anybody could do them and feel confident doing them on their own. That means no trainer, no coach, just me making sure that by the time that they finish this exercise series, they feel confident knowing they know how to do the exercise correctly. So let's take it from the top. 
Super seven, number one is walking. So most people do not get enough cardiovascular exercise. Walking could be scaled from biking, from using the recumbent bike, from using a treadmill. It could be walking outside. It could be walking uphill. It could be running. It could even be maybe walking in snow or on sand. It could be anything basically that's cardio. It could be dancing. It could be swimming. The goal here is to focus on cardiovascular exercise. So walking is number one. Everybody should be walking and I'll give you a teaser for the part two of this series. Walking should be done to a specific frequency. You know, we've got to do at least 150 minutes of walking exercise or cardiovascular exercise throughout the week. And it has to be difficult enough that you can talk but not sing. So in my treatment sessions with my patients, I'll often suggest that we start with one exercise at a time. And I'll build them up session by session and set the parameters so that they leave my instruction feeling like a winner. I don't want my patients to leave being overwhelmed, feeling like they suck, feeling like they need a lot of assistance to do these exercises correctly. So usually, number one, most people know how to walk and they're probably already doing it. So I start off my instruction with something that they feel confident in to begin with. Number two, squats. So if this word sounds scary, I'll just say it's sitting down and standing up from a chair. And I always have this exercise, easy enough to do, hard enough to get better. So, and I don't want it to be painful. If my patients are struggling getting up from a chair because of weakness or pain, I'll put a phone book under their butt, or I'll suggest that they use their hands, but I never want them to feel like they're unable to do it confidently or without pain if it's gonna be in their home program. Number three, upper body push. Depending on somebody's ability, this could be a bench press. This could be a push up on a countertop. This could be an overhead press, a landmine press. It could be a dip. You can be creative. And if somebody says that they wanna do more than one exercise for the upper body press exercise, they could do different exercises throughout the week. Maybe on Tuesday, they could do an overhead press. Maybe on Thursday, they could do a push up. But I don't wanna ever give too many options before there's a habit established. So make sure that your patients feel like winners in the CEPI Super 7. That's the goal. <laughs> Number three, four, <laughs> deadlift. So it's hard. It's, this exercise is probably the hardest to have enough weight at home to do. So we can come up with some variations. Deadlift could be a single leg deadlift, like a drinking bird exercise. It could be a straight leg deadlift. There are lots of different options, but predominantly focusing on being able to lift something up from the ground using a posterior chain dominated movement. That's the most important part for the deadlift. And if somebody's being spicy and saying, that sounds scary, it sounds bad for my back, it sounds like that exercise is something I shouldn't do, ask some questions like, do you feel confident lifting up a pot off of the ground? If your significant other were to fall, would you wanna be able to help them up? If you had a grandchild who's on the ground, would you wanna feel confident in being able to pick up that grandchild? So deadlift is a functional movement. Next, upper body pull. We've got options there too. You could do a bent over row, a pull down row. You could do, if there's access to something where you could hang on to, you could do a modified pull up. You can do lots of different options for this upper body pull. Lunges. This is a really important move. So if somebody says, oh no, no, I can't do lunges, my knees hurt. I'll always suggest that lunges are the same way to catch yourself from a fall and get up from a fall. If you can't do a lunge, those two things are gonna be pretty difficult. And just to bring it back home, 
We want to make sure that lunges are easy enough to do, but hard enough that you get better. So I don't want anybody to be in pain. I'll modify and modify and modify until somebody feels like a winner doing this move. And then the last one, sit-ups. Inspired by my husband who said, people should be able to have enough core strength to get out of bed in the morning. Side note, if you have an older adult or anybody who gets onto a table laying face up and farts or struggles looking like a turtle on their back, this exercise is probably important. I know that this is a real controversial exercise for a lot of clinicians who have been telling people like I have for a long time not to do sit-ups because it's bad for their back. You can modify it to be a plank. You can do a crunch. You can do a knees to elbows. You can do a lot of different moves to get the core muscles activated and moving so that people can get up from their bed without farting or looking like a turtle on their back throughout their life. So thanks for joining me today to talk about the Seppi Super 7. If nothing else, I hope this inspires you to come up with a streamlined version of exercises so that you don't have to think so hard every day. Thank you everybody for joining me. Have a great rest of your day.